Fallout New Vegas has many weapons in its arsenal to choose from. Anywhere from a rolling pin to a mini nuclear bomb launcher, but can you beat Fallout New Vegas using only a shovel? Now, before we can enter this construction worker goes insane roleplay fantasy, a few rules need to be set for this run. Firstly, no sneak build, because on this show, we like to keep things as difficult as possible. I want my enemies to know that I'll be using my shovel to create sphincters in places they can't even imagine. The second rule, all I can use is a shovel as my weapon. Stim packs and armor are allowed, but I will need to use only my shovel to exterminate enemies. Lastly, no intelligence this run because I want my character to have the IQ of a gluten-free loaf of bread. Now let's attempt to answer a question no one has ever asked. You are probably thinking that I'm a masochistic freak with the rules that I made, but listen, I want this run to be as hard as I am when I wake up in the morning and have an old man watching over me. He told me his name and then I told him mine. I named my character after the sick fuck that wanted to watch this massacre ensue. I took my sweet time creating an abortion that failed to be aborted and dumped my points into strength, endurance, and perception. As the ancient Mandarin proverb said, when starting a new Vegas run, you better take everything from Mitchell's house, you dumb beta cuck. It was now time to head into Good Springs and find the love of my life. It didn't take long till I laid my eyes on him. I sold what I could to the merchant and was united with the shovel of my dreams, Greg. With Greg's beautiful, tight, petite, sexy body now in my hands, I went straight to Sunny Smiles so I could get a quick level up. Unfortunately, you have to use a gun, and guns aren't shovels, but hey, unlike my love life, I tried anyway. I was tired of committing to nothing and Greg was starting to demand flesh, so I went on my way to Prim to find out what the homies were doing over there. Getting to Prim was simple enough. Unfortunately, it seemed as though there was an unforeseen casualty with an NCR agent that happened to be all alone and vulnerable. I'm not really sure what happened, so I did what any confused man would do if they found a dead body. I left it there. After the confusion passed, I went straight to find the deputy of Prim so I could set this town straight and back on its feet. A marriage of shovel and craniums ensued in that building. We clapped those dudes harder than playing patty cake in the second grade with the boys, and unfortunately, there happened to be another casualty, the deputy. He, uh, yeah, he got shot in the line of fire. Yeah. That's that's what happened to him. But hey, he still had use to me. With the location of Baby Man's last known position on my map, it was time for a road trip with Greg. Before we unfold more of this wacky and zany adventure, a plan needs to be set. So here it is, boys. With Greg now in my possession, it was time to launch Operation Soy Sauce Packet. Stimpax and the Heavy Hitter perk were going to be my godsend this run, so I needed to achieve those as fast as possible. You see, Operation SSP will consist of a few key tasks before I can complete this run. Run. The first, Kaisar must die before the final sequence of the game. The reasoning on that is because he won't let me kill Baby Man with a shovel. We need Benny to embrace Greg's enormous, thick, and throbbing cock. The second task, every worker in the top three casinos on the strip must die. The reasoning on this task is because Greg has a gambling addiction, and I don't want him to dig himself into another hole. You guys get that one? Guys? <sighs> okay, let's get back to it. The travel to Nipton was uneventful to say the least. You know, I ran into a hiccup, but I dealt with it accordingly. Alright guys, it would be very rude of me if I didn't let the children go first, so go ahead. Yeah, I'll give you a head start. Okay, now it's my turn. Unfortunately, Nipton didn't have much for me there, except for a few cripples, which I helped get down because I'm a gentleman. I didn't have time to talk to the mayor, but I should have because the fires and broken down houses that were abundant in this town were breaking so many safety regulations. This was unacceptable. While leaving that decrepit place, I found this leaf blower. I'm a man of culture, so if I see a leaf blower, I take it. A couple of unprepared viper gangers later, eventually I found myself in Novak, and locating Manny was my next priority to continue continue forward with this run. You guys gave me great suggestions on how to easily get the info on Baby Man that I needed. But listen gentlemen, I found an easier way. After working out a deal with Manny and getting what I needed, it was time for me to head to Boulder City. With haste, I got to Boulder City like an overweight person would get to McDonald's. The NCR informed me of a problem, and they welcomed me like a vibrator in a monastery. This problem that arose needed to be negotiated, but that wasn't a problem because Greg was good at that. After the situation was calmly and unviolently diffused, it was time to head off to the Dreaming City, Las Vegas, baby. Greg and I made it to Freeside, and then I quickly realized that when your speech value is the same as the amount of friends you have in the single digits, Fallout likes to shit all over you, so I was going to have to actually work my way into the strip. I joined the Kings, beat a bunch of NCR, guys, guys, one after another, you all will get your moment with Greg. 
I, I promise you. After the tedious set of missions, I got a pass into the strip, and now it was time to go and confront that dingleberry, Benny. Yo, are you alright, man? Oh, yeah, do it right there. Yeah, baby. Yes! I met with Benny and then quickly regretted it because I realized there was another shit show brewing. Because of my french fry level speech skill, Benny set his dogs on me and they tried to pound my tight little bum. I couldn't have that happen though because it was too early in this playthrough to be sodomized. I skedaddled out of there and made a mental note to level up my speech. A leader was needed and since it was impossible to get to Yes Man, Mr. House will have to do. After meeting Mr. House, I finally got some alone time with Greg and the Leaf Blower. Their sexual skills were equivalent to inanimate objects. So so the threesome was lackluster. It was time to head to Kaisar and pay grandpa a visit. Quickly, I traversed my way to Kaisar's camp. He met me with his old man praise and told me that if I do a mission for him, he would let me destroy baby man. This sounded enticing, but I knew he wasn't going to let me do it with a shovel, so abiding by him was worthless. It was now time to cave explore. It started out as a fun activity, but when I was down here, I came to a stunning revelation. My character was actually so damn repulsive that I didn't even want to play anymore. He looks like a sand sentient being from another galaxy. This shit was nightmare fuel. I got Mr. House the ego boost he needed and now it was time to take care of some unfinished business. I told Mr. House of the duty that had been done, grabbed some stim packs, and then prepared myself for the battle that was about to begin. I thought that this was going to be a tough fight, but Kaisar's men were good sports about it. They decided to volunteer in being organic baseballs as I practiced my swinging. After Greg absolutely demolished and raped all of Kaisar's dreams, it was time to bring out good old grandpa. We agreed to a nice 1v1 on my favorite map, Rust. Quick scope only and... Oh, I... I played Ring Around the Rosie, booty blasting everyone that got close. Surprisingly, it wasn't even that hard because the AI in this game had doorknob brains. After a few minutes, I was finally able to finish off Grandpa and give him a little taste of what we were working with. With Kaisar dead and my nuts now in his mouth, I grew irritated with myself because I almost forgot the actual task at hand. I set Benny free and it felt as though a weight was lifted off my shoulders. With Benny dead, our next task was given to us by Mr. House. It was time for Greg to pay a visit to the boomers. Now unfortunately, after recording their massacre, my fucking OBS crashed, so I lost absolutely everything. But here's a quick gist. Can you imagine? You take in an incredibly ugly looking ancient alien, first time you have talked to anyone in decades, and then he fucks you and your leaders without consent? And with a shovel? I can imagine that, because that's exactly what I did. With the boomers now out of commission, I returned to Mr. House and told him of what had happened. The next task was for me to deal with the situation that was going on behind closed doors with the Omertas. Greg and I are pretty good with handling these things, so Mr. House chose the right crew for the job. I even had a perfect new outfit just for this occasion. So for some reason, Mr. House didn't like how I handled that situation, but nonetheless, I still had to push forward. My next task was taking out the Brotherhood of Hypebeast. We made our way to their HQ and upon arrival, we were kidnapped and separated. They sent me on a quest to deter a man that was in the wrong side of the hood. I was reunited with Greg and then went to go talk some sense into this guy. After a great organic game of baseball, the Brotherhood was proud and now fully trusted me. Time was of the essence so I needed to swing right into action. I found Hardin and beat a man fully dressed in power armor to death with a shovel. I grabbed his passcode and went straight to killing the Elder. After his booty was demolished, I quickly killed a Brotherhood guard as his friend literally watched me and did nothing about it. Now that I had the key to exit the bunker, I only needed one last code to set the place to blow. I skedaddled down the hall and killed the head scribe. With the three codes in hand, I set the damn to blow and walked my cute ass right out of that bunker. With the brotherhood silenced, I quickly informed Mr. House and immediately failed his next task because for some odd reason, the NCR didn't trust me enough. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I waited and did a couple vendor resets for stim packs and then made my way to good old El Dorado. Mr. House wanted to make sweet and sensual love to that place, and I was the middle man. I got there and clapped those NCR booty cheeks real good. <laughs> it looks like mama raised Johnny to be a little bitch. Here, here let me show you something, Johnny. Oh, <laughs> I guess he didn't like that. Before returning to Mr. House and finishing this run, I needed to get a few things done for Operation SSP. So these had to be done off the radar. I went back to Good Springs, vendor farmed some stim packs, and now it was time for Greg to finally bust his nut. Before we could do that though, I wanted to test something. You know, for Todd Howard's sake. Curiosity really urged me to damage one of these Securitrons to see how much I would exactly do. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. 
The bond between Greg and I was nearly complete. Operation Soy Sauce Packet was nearly done, boys. We finished off the last two casinos and it was done. The playthrough was ready to be completed. Operation SSP had been accomplished. The last stretch of the game was finally here. Greg and I walked handle in hand to the dam and clapped anyone and everything that came in our paths. Don't make me do it, man. I know you don't. Okay, I'm doing it. I planted Mr. House's last nut into the dam and then set off to the Leggett camp so I could wrap this run up. This video has just turned into a rape compilation now, and I don't think I could keep this up on YouTube for any longer. Slowly but surely, I tenderized the guards in the camp, and my 80 speech was ready for this exact moment. I needed it to convince Lanius to actually 1v1 me on Rust, quickscope only, unlike Kaisar did. Lanius turned out to be quite a worthy opponent, and I totally didn't die 15 times trying to kill him. Okay. Okay, Lanius, now you're gonna... Okay, we're... I'm good. Lanius decided he was going to be a good dog and lay down for the rest of the fight. After Lanius became my slave, it was time to confront the NCR. Oliver tried to stop me, but my army of dads pulled up and finished them off for me. It was over, boys. You can beat Fallout New Vegas with only a shovel. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next week's video, where we discuss the importance of imaginary friends while in adulthood.